Hello and welcome to our candidate interview series. My name is Robin Swan. I'm the Director of Government Affairs for the Winter Park Chamber of Commerce. This series allows us to hear from the candidates participating in our virtual political mingle, a forum held on July 29th, where you, our guests, can learn about the candidates and vote in a straw poll. Today, we're talking to Mark Van Valkenburg. Mark is a candidate for uh, Circuit Court in the Ninth Judicial Circuit, Group 39. Mark, welcome, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, and thank you for having me. So we have three questions for you today. Um, they're the same three that we've asked all the other candidates. Uh, the first is, what is your primary motivation for running for this position? Sure. And as I said before, I was going to start my timer, so I try not to go um, too far over. Um, I'm the third generation of my family to live in Central Florida. Um, my grandfather was a doctor here, um, Robert Zellner. My mother, aunt, uncle all graduated from Edgewater. Um, my wife and I um, moved here and have, have raised our, our three children here, well, still raising one, um, who all went to Orange County Public Schools. Um, and I deeply care about and want to serve our community um, and felt like with my training and experience that as, as a lawyer, you know, sort of the, I guess the highest honor or the, the best way that I could do that was to serve as a circuit judge. Um, the impetus to deciding to run at this time was I recently spent um, a little more than four years as the general counsel to the public defender's office um, in the Orange and Osceola counties. And at the PD's office, you're reminded, you know, every day of what justice is all about. And, you know, I'd note that, you know, they're not, you know, people think, oh, how do you, how can you represent those clients? But the assistant public defenders are really, you know, they're not about Know, getting a criminal off. They're about making sure that there's a fair and equal process um, and, and equal treatment for all. Um, by becoming a judge, I think I'll have the opportunity to serve the population of Orange and Osceola County in many ways. Um, in the criminal courts, obviously, you protect the rights of, um, of defendants, but also of victims um, and keep our community safe. Um, in family law courts, and, and people don't realize the impact, I think, that, that the circuit courts have because they also cover um, family law. And so anytime that somebody's going to get a divorce, that's in front of a circuit judge. Um, and you can help, you know, put the family, hopefully put the, help, help the families put discord behind them and, and move forward with theirs and their children's lives. Um, I think that it's important that when somebody talks about wanting to um, provide service to the community that they've got the track record to back it up. And I think I do. Um, you know, I continue to be involved in legal organizations and committees, but I think, uh, I guess I don't really consider that to be community service. And so I've been involved, for example, since when we moved here, um, my wife and I were involved with Habitat for Humanity. Family Selection Committee, which was the third state in which we've uh, been involved with that organization. I've uh, provided free services through the Legal Aid Society for 25 years, which includes um, doing divorces for people, helping people with divorces, now mediating family law cases through legal aid, um, writing wills for people with AIDS, you know, a, num a number of different things. Um, I've worked with the YMCA, I'm on the board with Easter Seals, I, I won't you know, bore you with a long list, but it is available at my website. Um, and I've also been um, very involved with this chamber. Um, I was a member of the class of leadership, or the class of 10, class 10 of Leadership Winter Park, and went on to chair a couple of classes and was chair of the Alumni Association. Moved on into um, helping with the, the Youth Leaders Program for many years. Um, and so I hope that um, you know, all of these activities will show that I, you know, when I, when I say I want to serve the community, that I really mean it. Great. And how would you say you are uniquely qualified to serve in this position? Um, good question. Um, in addition to, obviously, the, the service that I've provided, 
um, I think it, the, the biggest thing it, is it boils down to experience. Um, I have 25 years of experience as a lawyer. That includes the 25 years as a, a civil litigator. Um, it also includes 10 years that I've been certified as a Supreme Court certified circuit, it's hard, a long title, but circuit civil mediator. And so I mediate um, a very variety of, of different cases through that. Um, in um, you know, trying to serve, after I became a um, um, circuit civil mediator, I went ahead and, and got trained. I was sharing office space with family lawyers. So I got trained to be a um, family law mediator as well. And I don't do that um, for, um, you know, I don't do that for money. I do that only through the Legal Aid Society. So free services, pro bono services for those in need. Um, so, you know, right there, you've got, um, you know, the, the basic um, divisions in circuit court are civil, criminal, family, and juvenile, and I have experience in all of those. Um, I'm the one lawyer in, the, in this um, race that has jury trial experience. Um, I'm the one that is AV rated by Martindale Hubble, which is the highest re um, peer review rating that they give. Um, I've experienced working in law firms um, where, you know, in this case, um, one of them here in Winter Park, Winter Weedle Haynes, Ward and Woodman. Um, but I also have 15 years of experience of managing my own practice, which I think is important um, that, you know, it's, it's all on you then, sort of like a judge, judge has to make the decisions. You know, when you run your own practice, not only is it managing your own practice and making those decisions in court and in trial or um, with your clients, but also, you know, making sure that the, the money's coming in and going out and, and um, in those, you know, what it takes to, to maintain a business. Um, I think as a result of my experience, I am prepared to walk into whatever division is needed, um, where help is needed. And I think at this time, uh, particularly with COVID-19 having basically shut down the courts, um, that um, we really need somebody that's going to be able to walk in and efficiently um, go through cases in whatever division the chief judge assigns them to. And if elected, how do you hope to positively affect the office and the constituency you will serve? I think that's the uh, maybe the, the most difficult of your, your, your questions. Um, and I say so because it's important to note at the start that you know, the answer to, well, that a, a trial court judge's powers are limited. And, mm -hmm. you know, there are problems out there today with which the judge and judiciary, a judge and judiciary can, can help, but that, you know, really need the legislature, charitable organizations and society as a whole to tackle in order to solve. Um, in addition, I want to make it clear from the outset that a trial court judge is charged with following the law. And so I will follow the law, um, and, you know, the statutes, what the statutes say, and the way that they've been interpreted by the Supreme Court and appellate courts below me, um, you know, whether I agree with them or not. Um, that said, you know, here's what I, I can promise to do. Um, I'll always remember that I, I am a public servant. I will always treat people fairly um, and with respect. Um, equally and strive to um, ensure that people are um, know that they're going to get a fair shake in my courtroom. Um, I'll be prepared for every hearing and case that comes before me and will give both sides an equal opportunity to, to, to tell their story. Um, at the same time, um, I'm a person who's going to expect lawyers to, um, to be prepared and we'll make sure that cases proceed at an appropriate pace um, and are not um, unnecessarily delayed. Um, what else? I will be, um, you know, I'll, with decisions, I'll be thoughtful and deliberate, but, but I'm not afraid to make decisions that may make one side or the other unhappy. You know, in it's a, the job of a trial court, you gotta make those decisions and, um, you know, it, rulings are, are oftentimes gonna go against one party or another. And, and um, you know, hopefully they understand those, but um, you know, they're not always going to be happy. 
Um, I, I will look for ways to improve myself consistently as a judge and the system as well. I think there's a good example now of that in that um, when the courts um, did get shut down, um, a lot of judges moved to um, online hearings so that um, at least preliminary matters in proceedings could, or in cases could proceed. Um, many lawyers um, and, and judges actually have said that that saves both time and money. And so that's something that I think should stay um, when we've you know, defeated or, or moved past COVID-19 um, because I think it, it will make everybody's jobs uh, more efficient and, and easier. Um, I'm trying to wrap up here. So as you know, I guess as a whole, I think that the Ninth Circuit has a great group of judges um, who have a genuine interest in seeing that um, systemic problems are resolved and justice prevails in the courts. Um, I look forward to working with them um, and to positively impact the lives of the citizens of Orange and Osceola counties. Well, great. Thank you. And Mark, thank you again for joining us today. We appreciate thank, it. Thank you. I hope it didn't go, didn't go too much over time. Not at all. And to our viewers, please join us for our vir virtual political mingle and straw poll on July 29th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. We want to also thank our events sponsors, presenting sponsor Charter Communications, and supporting sponsor the University of Central Florida. Register online today and join us. Um, go to winterpark.org and we'll see you July 29th. Thank you.